successful in any sport or occupation involves perspective. It means being faced with a problem or an issue and choosing to see that as a challenge and then seeing that challenge as an opportunity instead of as an obstacle. She's a two-time Olympian. She's from Summerside PEI. And Heather Moyes, if nothing else, you are a great story of reinvention. I mean, first of all, let's just talk about the field of athletics. How does someone go from rugby to track and field and cycling to bobsledding? I mean, that alone, uh, I mean, you're like the Canadian Olympic version of Deion Sanders meets Bo Jackson. Tell us how. I've What's... actually been compared to Bo Jackson before. Oh, really? So yeah. that's not a new I line. I had hip surgery just like he did. Like it was okay. yeah, lots of stuff. Okay. Yeah. But you were a kid who could yes. always excel at sports, but you told me that really you didn't find out what hard work was all about until uh, you left yeah. PEI and were really pushed. Yeah, I, um, I played sports my whole life, but it was always just for fun. And I excelled naturally at sports, so I just never worked at it. It just came easily. I thought that working and training would turn it into a job. Okay. That's not to say I wasn't competitive when I was actually on the field in a game. Right. But besides that, it was just it was a social outlet for me. It was, you know, always in hope self advocacy to do something you do well. Right. Um, but I didn't realize winning, now in hindsight when I look back, I wasn't motivated by winning. Um, I was motivated by the challenges and seeing so the bigger the challenge and the more implausible that outcome seemed, right. the more determined I was to see how close I could get, whether it was accomplishing it or not. And let's, while we're at it, let's throw what? Mountain climbing onto it down <laughs> yeah. in the Antarctic. Tell us that story. Yes. Um, I was asked uh, to, if I would climb the highest mountain in Antarctica, uh, which we did just this past January, and all of it was to raise awareness for post-traumatic stress disorder and also to raise money to help transition our war veterans back into, into right. society. And at first, I was just thinking, all I was thinking about was the mountain. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm a sprinter. I'm not an endurance person. Mm -hmm. uh, and two, I hate the cold. Mm -hmm. So really, this doesn't sound like a good idea at all. But this guy, you know, he was, you know, wanting to sponsor me to do this trip. So I'll think about it. And then, you know, when I thought about it, I then became ashamed at the fact that it took so long for me to say yes. And I mean, it really, it took two days. Like, I think I, I called this guy back the next day or two days later. And I was ashamed that it took so long because of the reason for the climb, not the climb itself. Okay. And it was, uh, I mean, I'm only able to live the life that I choose to live because these soldiers have chosen to put their lives on the line for our freedoms. And so I just, I was a bit ashamed about that. And also, I talk to my audiences about stepping outside of your comfort zone all the time and how you can't discover what you're truly capable of unless you're willing to put yourself out there. And so, minus 40, that's out of my comfort zone. Hey everyone, you probably don't recognize me, but it's Heather and I just want to let you know that although the weather sucked, it was so cold and now I look like I should be on Star Wars. My hair is frozen like a beard. Um, we just summited Mount Vincent. That segues into, I think, which is the core of the Reinvention Chronicles right here on this show. You were certified as an occupational therapist. Mm -hmm. Your resume would show great Olympic athlete in multiple disciplines, two-time gold medal winner. Now here you are at a conference yes. as you enter an entirely new field mm -hmm. called professional speaking and you've been in all day sessions basically becoming the student all over again. Yes. So what can you talk about in terms of the transition and what can you relate to people who are right now watching this, you know, they, it doesn't matter what they're doing. Let's say whether they're an athlete or a bricklayer or a painter or uh, an accountant, but they want to do something else. You've actually done that. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're doing something that you're already loving to do and you want to stay with what you're doing, it is all about growth and development. And there's, I don't think there's anyone who can say with 100% confidence and certainty that they are as good as they could ever get. So okay. I think growth and development is absolutely important. But in terms of changing your focus and trying something new, I mean, I feel like I've reinvented myself, 
Yeah, so many times. I mean, I went from being a, like a PE Islander to a student away from home living abroad and then um, doing development work. I, I did development work in Trinidad and Tobago for, I lived mm -hmm. down there for almost three years. Moved back, I was then a student again doing my master's in occupational therapy, then as an athlete, and then switching between sports and now, and now as you said, a speaker. And I, I think that, um, no, no, I don't think. I know that the key is to reinvent, to successfully reinventing yourself or, or making that change of direction is your willingness to feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. to, to put yourself in a position um, where you're feeling a little bit exposed and a little bit vulnerable because it is to change anything and to start something new. You are having to, you have to remember that everyone, every expert you meet started as a beginner at some point. And so it's looking at you know, when people say, I want to do what you do, um, I think it was uh, John Maxwell, a speaker in the States, who said, if you want to do what I do, are you willing to do what I did in order to get here? Seeing that challenge as an opportunity to think outside the box, to be creative, to potentially be innovative leaders, an opportunity to see how good we can actually be. Now, the story of coming from behind in the Olympic Games to win a highly unlikely gold medal in our bobsled race is a parallel to the highly unlikely story of me recovering from my hip surgery in order to be there in the first place. How similar is this new path you're on in terms of professional speaking to what you experienced as an athlete in terms of what goes on behind the scenes that the audience never sees? Preparation. Uh, to be successful at anything, it takes a, a ton of preparation um, and it takes stretching yourself, like beyond. And so, I mean, when you're talking about sports, you're talking about, in a way, that physical, well, that, that mental kind of vulnerability and exposure of putting yourself mm. in a competition where, one, millions of people are watching you. Um, they're watching, waiting to see if you're going to fail. Um, some people are hoping you're going to fail, right? I mean, you're competing against other countries. You're just, yeah. not everyone is, is in your corner. Um, so people are, eyes are on you, and they're watching whether you're going to succeed or not. And so preparation, not only physical preparation, um, but also mental preparation and that emotional preparation of putting yourself in that right space, that uh, avoiding distractions, there's a whole lot that goes into it that's very similar to, to being a speaker. But even though the skill sets are completely different, when I talk to my audiences, it's the qualities that are, that, that, that make a successful athlete are the same qualities that make us successful in any occupational industry. And I'm not talking about specific skills to execute the job, I'm talking about like the characteristics and the qualities and the, those Attitudinal traits. Attitudinal things, uh, right. mental state. It's that willingness to step outside of your comfort zone, but the main thing that I think that, you, that we need or anybody needs before that because is the belief that that is, there's no guarantee, right? but believing in that possibility of what exists beyond that threshold of comfort, because if you don't actually believe that that is a possibility, then there's no point in actually putting yourself out there and making yourself vulnerable if you don't think your outcome is actually going to happen. So I think step one is actually believing that it's possible. No guarantees. No guarantees in anything, yeah. right? In life, it. business, yeah. sports. It's true. But once you actually believe that that possibility exists and you embrace that challenge, then it's the willingness to step outside of your comfort zone, put yourself in a, make yourself a rookie again. You're a rookie and you're starting from the beginning. You're working your way up and earning your stripes and earning all of, getting all of that experience that you need. Heather, yeah. thanks so much for sharing this. <laughs> You're welcome. Some, some thoughts on how to go from the podium in one profession to the podium in another. Here on the Reinvention Chronicles, two-time Olympic gold medalist, Heather Moyes with some ideas and insights to help you recreate and reimaginate the business, the career, the life that you deserve.
Okay. Let's roll it. Oh, we are rolling. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Do you want to start that over? No, not at all. I edit that out. Okay, ready?